Welcome back to GAL. Today we are going to be talking about transitions, how to apply them and modify them in Premiere. We're going to start with the built-in transitions and then I'm going to show you how to use this awesome 500 plus seamless transition pack by Vamify. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. I have a sequence of different landscape stock video shots from Storyblocks. If you guys are interested in the stock video from Storyblocks, I'll put a link in the description. So one thing to note when you're applying transitions is you don't want to overkill it. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to put too many transitions. Every transition should have an intention or a purpose in your cut. Now I made a whole video on creative cuts and one of the cuts is a match cut. If you want to watch that video, I'll put a card in the upper right, but essentially these first two shots have the same movement. It's forward movement on a drone. So it's a great match on action, right? It's a very simple one. But to make it even more fluid, we could apply a simple cross dissolve between them so it's more seamless and fluid. The first way to apply the built-in cross dissolve is by right clicking between the two clips and applying a default transition because by default, the cross dissolve is the default transition in Premiere. So if you right click between these two clips and apply default transitions, you will see the cross dissolve is applied. And let's see how it looks looks pretty fluid. If you need to make the duration longer, you can just grab either end and you can see the duration appears just below it and it shows you how many more um, seconds you are adding. So if you want it to be three seconds, just stop there. And you'll see that it's also symmetrical. So there's the same amount of duration on the left of the cut and on the right of the cut. And that's because the alignment is center at cut. If we change this to start at cut, you will see that the transition shifts over to start at the beginning of the first cut, or you can change it to end at cut. So it'll start towards the beginning and end at the cut. More often than not, you're going to use a center at cut. A couple other ways that you can change the duration that is cool to know about, you can right click and you can set transition duration this way, or you can go up to effect controls and let's say you wanted to make it two seconds, you can just change it there and you can see it automatically adapts. So that is the cross dissolve. Another thing that you may need to do when you are editing, let's say you're editing to the beat of the music and there's a beat about right here and you don't want to change the transition. What you can do is hit N on your keyboard to enable the rolling edit control and you can roll this edit cut point to meet the playhead and the transition stays the same. So you can move this at any point you need and the transition remains the same. It's a pretty cool tool that I use all the time. So the second way to apply transitions is by going to the effects panel, going to video transitions and opening up this folder. Now you can see that I have a bunch of different transitions here. Some of them are built in and a, a few of them are paid for plugins. So the dissolve folder, the immersive video, which are transitions for 360 video that comes built in Premiere, Iris, page peel, slide, wipe, and zoom. These are all built in. Now, if I wanted to apply a wipe between these two clips, I would just open up wipe and I would take the wipe transition, click and drag and place between the two clips. And now you can see it just is this nice wipe. Now I probably wouldn't use a wipe in this context. This is just for demonstrating how the transition works, but this transition would work really great for a before and after uh, video. So if you were showing what the house looked like before it got renovated and then after, this would be a great effect to use. And if you click on it, you can see you have more controls. So you can actually add a border. So if I increase this to like 25, you can see a thick uh, black bar here. If you wanted to change this to white, you can do that. Um, and if you wanted to change the direction, because right now it's going from left to right, you can change this by selecting the transition and selecting reverse. And now it goes from right to left, which is pretty cool. So that's a wipe transition. If you ever wanted to make any transition, the default transition, let's say you didn't want cross dissolve to be the default. And for some reason you wanted the wipe to be the default. You can just right click on wipe 
and set selected as default transition. Another thing you can do that's really handy is set the default duration for all of your transitions. You can go up to Premiere Pro, Preferences, and then go to Timeline. And this is where you can choose the default duration of a video transition. And I recommend changing this to seconds and you can change it to whatever duration that you want, let's say two. And the reason why I prefer seconds is because if you choose frames, then the duration is different depending on the frame rate for the different sequences. So you can hit okay and that's all good. Another transition I wanted to show you is actually one of the dissolve transitions and it's dip to black. So I can just drag and drop the dip to black right here. And you'll notice that it doesn't default to the center cut like this. If you click on this, it defaults to start at cut. And that's because there's no more information in the front of this clip. If I drag this up, this is the start of the clip. I can't expand this out here because there's no information. So it automatically defaults to start at the cut. And if I change this to center at cut, you'll see these stripes. And whenever you see these stripes, it means there's no information in the clip to follow the cut. And if for some reason you wanted it at the center cut, I can just hit Command X to cut this. And what I can do is I can roll this edit in so there is information there and then push this over and then expand this out. And now if I dip to black here, you'll see that there's no stripes because now there's information. So you see, this is a very common dip to black. It's almost like a cross dissolve and then there's just a moment of black. And this is used in a lot of trailers for a cinematic effect. Again, be careful with your transitions. You don't want to overdo it unless it's underscoring the theme or if you're trying to be cheesy or you're trying to have some sort of emotion, you can use as many transitions as you want. But remember, think about how is this transition adding to the value of the story or the theme of the video. So these are the built-in transitions. There are other types of transitions where they're not located in effects and they're actual project files that you drag and drop into the project panel. And Vamify has this new pack of 500 plus transitions. They're seamless transitions and they're really cool. And you import them into the project panel. Now I reached out to them and they gave me the pack for free and they also sponsored this video. So if you guys use my code GAL10, you can get 10% off this awesome pack. So after you download the Vamify transitions, if you go into main project, you will see that there's a project file for each type of resolution. So depending on what resolution you're working on, you'll import that transition project file. So I'm working in full HD 920 by 1080. So I'm going to drag and drop that into the project panel. Now a little pop-up will happen and you want to make sure to import the entire project create a folder for the imported items and also allow importing of duplicate media. Then hit OK and it will just take a second to import the project. You'll get a little rainbow wheel most likely, but don't have to worry here. It's just trying to find all the media at the moment and import it correctly into uh, your project. Now you may get something pop up here that says, uh oh, I can't find the media and you need to link the media. There's no reason to be alarmed here. It's just telling you that it can't find uh, Felix's desktop, which is what this um, pack was made on. So all you need to do is tell Premiere Pro that actually these swishes, these audio files are actually located on your drive now. To do that, you're going to hit locate and then you're going to go into Vamify, transitions, and then under main project, you're going to follow this path. So footage, audio, swishes. So we're going to go to footage, audio, swishes, and then find swish-01 and then hit OK. And what this will do is it'll locate all of this missing media and you don't have to worry about doing it for each individual one. And then it says it can't find some rendered files. Just ignore that and hit skip all. So now that that's done, now we can actually play around with all the transitions. So what you can do is you can open up any of these transitions. There's flat, glitch, panoramic, perspective, spin, stretch, warp, zoom, a bunch. So let's say we wanted to use a spin transition. What we can do is open up one of these subfolders here. Let's say we wanted to use the elastic. And what we can do is double click to open up this bin and then click on the icon view. And you can make this bigger and it will show you a preview of how this transition looks, which is really cool. So what these transitions are, are essentially sequences that they've put together. So that's why there's actual images here. If I double click to open this up, you will see that there's a sound effect as well. 
So because this is a sequence with footage, there is one little trick you need to do before you drag and drop them in the timeline. So let's say you wanted to apply this center rotation left in between these two clips. One thing to remember is because there is footage on video layer one, you want to make sure that V1 is not highlighted blue. So make sure that this is turned off and that this icon is off here. So when I drag and drop this, it's just taking the transitions, not the images of Los Angeles here that is part of this transition sequence. So now what we can do is hit return or enter to render out this transition so we can see what it looks like. It just takes a second or so. Great. And now we can play this back. It's the exact same philosophy for every single one. So if we go back to the project transitions here, and let's say we wanted to apply a perspective transition, elastic in. If we double click to open this up, we can go to icon view and we can preview the transitions that we want. So this is up smooth, this is down left. So let's say we want the perspective in down for this next transition. You can select it. Now watch what happens when I select and drag and drop it. It's not showing the transition, it just has the audio. Why is that? Why is there no video? Well, that's because if you look over here, None of these video layers are selected on. What we need to do is turn on these sources here so it will import them. So now if we drag and drop it, you can see it takes video layer two and three. So now if we play it back, you can see it works. So always be sure to make sure that you have the video layer sources turned on so that way it'll be imported, okay? So have fun, play around with these transitions. Remember to use my code GAL10 to get 10% off and I'll put a link in my description box below. And if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If it gets to 5,000 likes, then you guys like these types of tutorials where I really go deep dive into a particular type of topic in Premiere Pro or any other software that you guys want to learn from. And if you guys are also interested, I have my own store where I make my own templates for my patrons each month where you can get them for free if you join the Patreon community. But if you want to buy them one off, I also sell them in my store at premiergal.com store. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!